Welcome to Hustuff in my CarWorks YouTube channel. This is part 3 of the repair title How to Diagnose and Repair Rear Differential Noise on Dodge Ram 1500 Trucks. What it was, it was bad tuning, which are these guys right there. We installed all four bearings new, and we have the outer one ready to be installed also, along with a brand new crotch sleeve. This way, we eliminate the possibility of these bearings going bad due to some of the metal circulating through the differential uh, when the other two bearings fail. So, in a couple of minutes, you're going to learn how to put it all back together. Next step is to remove the old bearing races, you know, the inner one and the outer one. So, to remove the outer one, use a punch right there where this opening is. Place your punch right there and then hit it with the hammer and then alternate bottom and top and keep hitting it until it comes out and then same thing with this outer race but you're going to have to do it from the other side you're going to do it from the front of the differential and it's going to have an opening on each end just like, the, just like this one and then drive both of the races out install the inner and outer bearing races with the driver so you don't damage them after the new races have been installed use a clean towel to wipe any metal that might be attached to the magnet located at the bottom of the differential. Use a scraper to remove any old gasket or silicone material from the mounting surface. Same thing with the cover. Remove it from the differential cover. Fill an oiler with gear oil and lubricate your bearings with gear oil prior to installation. So, go ahead and install the pinion from the back side of the threshold, of course. Then, you're going to slide a new crush sleeve from the front. Then, go ahead and slide the front bearing. Then, install the new pinion seal. Before you install the seal, install the crash sleeve, like I mentioned earlier, and the bearing, and go ahead and install one of the U-joint retaining caps with two bolts. Hold the yoke with the pry bar as you guide the uh, pinion in to try to get it seated. Not all the way because you're still going to tighten it to the uh, proper specs. But right now, if you get it close, then when you install the seal and when you install the yoke, you won't damage the seal. If the yoke is moving up and down because of the plate. So that's your best bet once you get these bearings situated, remove the nut and then pull the yoke back out again with the puller. Couple tips when installing the pinion seal. Lubricate the lip with either a light coat of grease, petroleum jelly, even gear oil. You want to make sure it's not dry when the drive line first starts turning. To keep it from leaking on the outer edge, just apply a very light coat of silicone the outer part of the seal so as simple as that looks it could save you from having to tear this darn thing apart again you know a couple weeks later nobody wants to do a job twice I know I don't I'm sure you don't either then just use a large socket you know a socket that fits on the uh, outer edge of the seal so it doesn't destroy it Alright, so finish by installing your yoke. Your washer, your nut, 
Here's something very important when tightening in the pinion nut. It is also possible that when you're trying to achieve the 210 foot-pounds of torque on this nut, that it may be way too tight that the pinion won't move. Now you don't want that because you're going to burn the bearing and all the work that you just did is going to go out the window. The correct preload on the bearings when they're brand new is 20 to 30 inch pounds. You know, that's when you're trying to turn the pinion. You know, it would take 20 to 30 inch pounds to start moving. You know, that's uh, what that's all about. Start tightening the nut in small increments and see which one you achieve first. You could achieve both the 210 foot pounds of torque on the nut and the uh, 20 to 30 inch pounds of preload, but it's very likely that you may only be able to get one of them which is the preload and there's a possibility that you may not be able to tighten this nut to the entire 210 foot-pounds because that thing would be like nearly impossible to move probably so just do it slowly you know 10 to 20 foot-pounds of torque increments on the nut and every time check the preload on the bearing with the inch-pounds torque wrench to see uh, what it takes to turn it. Once you have achieved the correct torque on your nut and preload on the bearings, go ahead and uh, install your drive line back on and install the caps and tighten the bolts. So once the pinion has been installed and the drive line is also installed, lubricate the carry bearings with gear oil, both sides and then same thing, lubricate your gears, the uh, pinion and the ring gear. No, you don't want anything to start moving dry. Put the bearing braces on, on both sides obviously, and install the carrier. And don't tighten them all the way, just snug them by hand, you know, with the ratchet and snug the caps on. Once you have installed your differential carrier and your caps on, install the lower bolt finger tight, you know, just kind of snug them. And the upper ones should have about 10 foot pounds max. You know, same thing, it's just mainly to, to keep them seated. Um, but the final torque is going to be achieved later. Cause right now you can uh, move your differential carrier. Next step is going to be setting the backlash in between the ring and the pinion. Using the adjusting tool that I showed you how to make on the previous video, go ahead and remove the plate from the bearings. You know, just by hand, just remove the plate, don't tighten them yet. Do this on both sides. The next step is to measure the backlash in between the ring and the pinion with the dial indicator. You know, move it back and forth. And the correct backlash is supposed to be between six and eight thousandths of an inch. So right now I got almost ten, so I, I have to adjust it. So in this case, it's necessary to reduce the backlash. And to do so, the right side adjuster needs to be loosened and the left side needs to be tightened slightly and this should be done at very small increments you know like a quarter of a turn mass at a time another thing to consider when doing it every time you turn the adjusters the bearings may not follow the movement of the adjusters so what you have to do obviously move your uh, dial indicator out of the way. Then you have to turn your, your drive shaft back and forth half a turn about 10 times every time you make an adjustment on the adjusters to adjust the backlash. What that's going to do is going to allow the bearings to seat and your adjustment is going to be accurate. So you're going to have to do that as many times as needed until your backlash is in between six and eight thousandths of an inch. There, so I have my backlash 
at 6,000 right now. 6 thousandths of an inch. Now what you need to do also, you need to set the backlash at least in two different spots. You know, because the clearance could be different. Now between the two, there cannot be more than 3 thousandths of an inch difference. Let's say if there's a wear pattern on the ring and the pinion that might not be exactly even. So if you have a spot that is closer, uh, let's say on on this side and then on the other side is it's a little bit more of a bigger gap in between the two there cannot be more than three thousandths of an inch difference so if this is six thousandths the other one shouldn't be more than nine if uh, if there is more than that then there's gonna be a need to replace the ring and the pinion so that is important and needs to be taken into consideration once you have achieved the desired backlash on the ring and pinion, tighten the bearing caps in three steps increments. The final torque is going to be 100 foot pounds. Start about 40. Then move to 70, and then final torque being 100 foot pounds. The next step is to preload the bearings. It needs to be started from the right hand side, tighten the adjuster in small increments until you reach 75 foot pounds and then rotate the drive shaft back and forth too to seat it as you do it. Then once that's done, use your dial indicator again and measure the backlash. Make sure it doesn't need to be readjusted because once you preload that bearing it may need to be. If you're still within the specs, Move to the left side adjuster and same thing, tighten it to 75 foot pounds. One last time, check your backlash in at least two spots. Once the correct backlash has been achieved and the preload has already been set on the bearings, install the threaded adjuster locks and tighten them up. Make sure that when you install them, Make sure it's sitting on the groove, one of the grooves, to keep the adjuster from coming loose. Otherwise, it defeats the whole purpose. Lubricate the carrier with gear oil and install the side gears and the pinion gears also known as spider gears and then remove the seal and inspect the axle bearings you know both sides make sure that there is no wear if there is any wear on your bearings this is the perfect time to replace them make sure you clean the surface with the towel really good before you install the seal to prevent leaks so install a new seal the same way I showed you how to install the pinion seal except that instead of a socket use a race driver turn the other direction and remember put a light coat of silicone on the outer edge and then lubricate the seal lubricate the lip so it doesn't start dry before it makes contact with the gear oil install the axles You know, guide them in carefully. If you want to destroy your brand new seal, okay. Install the other one on the other side, same way. Install the axle retaining clips and push the axles out just lock them in place both sides and install the pin note the direction of the uh, where the bolts gonna go Okay. 
one of the tricks with this ball with the retaining ball is to put a little bit of thread locker on the threads to keep it from coming loose and this is a crucial part of your differential right there if this bolt comes loose you're gonna be in trouble I mean your entire differential is gonna come apart and so you don't want that so we'll just finish tightening it up Run a bit of silicone or install a new gasket, whichever you want, on the cover and install it back on the differential. After you install the cover, if you use the silicone like I am, let it dry for 15 20 minutes, then after that, remove the plug. Fill it up with gear oil until it's flush and the food starts to come out. Once the food is level, then go ahead and put the plug back on. This is the perfect time to clean all that brake dust. Place a pan underneath, catch all the, all the stuff. Do that on both sides. Clean your drums, same thing with brake cleaner. Install them on, install your tires on. And then don't forget when you lower it to the ground you, you need to tighten your lug nuts, you know, torque them to the specs. That's when you know it's full, when it starts running out, just like that, see that? It's full, just put the plug back on. It takes almost three quarts. And this is the uh, nine and a quarter differential. This is the moment of truth. Let's see if the noise is going. All right, so so far the only thing I hear is the exhaust. And the wheels are turning. So it's the drive line. So this was a successful repair. Got rid of that awful differential noise. So hopefully that noise is all figured out for you and that you're not hearing it anymore. And uh, your car is running the way you want it to run. Again, I'm Jojo with HowStuffMyCarWorks.com and thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and check out our online store where we have accessories for cars and trucks. See you next time.